Everybody, welcome back to the Triple Option. It's spring football season. That's right. And we're here with our first of our spring preview series. Before I get into it, because I'm just ready to go. <laughs> football time. Got to clean some house. Got to let you guys say what's up to the people. It's Adam. It's Kevin. Guys, say what's up really quick. Let's get what's up really football. quick. Really <laughs> quick. Really. What's up? Oh, God, Adam, you're so literal. I love it. Um, <laughs> Guys, we're finally here. Spring football is this weekend it feels like it's only been a couple months but my god they were in dog years i feel like i haven't watched live football in <laughs> so long now it's a little bit because florida state sucked last year and a lot of it because it's it's just a lot of time like i'm really really excited so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about the quarterbacks as our first job of our first you know installment of our spring position preview series. We're gonna do it a little bit different than we did it last year. Just give you a little preview behind how the sausage is made. Uh, the last position preview series we did, guys, was in fall, and we did them all at once, and then we kind of dispersed them out. Um, and then we ended up talking about Brandon Moore uh, during our DB preview who had like left the program like seven days prior to when the video dropped. So we look like big idiots. We're actually not. So what we're going to do this, we're going to actually record them as we're about to release them. So we might even be doing some position previews as spring football is going on, which will be updated with the most relevant and <laughs> up to date information. So we don't look like bigger dumbasses than we are. So that's what we're doing this year and we're doing quarterbacks first and guys it's the story of jordan travis but i guess before we get into the jordan travis stuff because we have film to analyze how do we feel about florida state going into this year as the quarterback position it's been a large bone of contention for some people in the fan base camps are divided the fan base is polarized uh, which of course is very new uh for college football especially this fan base oh um, yes yeah i mean i uh, I, I think you've got a frontline starter, but I think after that, then there's a lot of question marks and, you know, that's concerning going into going into the season. Um, knowing that Jordan has had an injury history, you know, you've got to, you've got to consider that the potential is there for him to get hurt again. And you don't really have a reliable player who you could call on to come in and play for him right now. Um, we'll see if that happens, that changes post spring or not, but right now, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm skept skeptical about that room. Okay, Kevin, what about you? Yeah, I think we can look at the bright side and say this is the first time in a while that there hasn't been some, like there's relative comfort about the starting quarterback. Um, sure. Right? Like this is probably the first time in a few years that the fan base as a, as a whole would agree that they're, they're comfortable with who they have at starter. Um, obviously, he's not a Heisman favorite or anything like that, but... He's a solid college football player uh, as it stands right now. And, um, but yeah, the contention comes with the backups. And I, I feel like I'm the only one ringing the bell that the backups aren't, aren't the unmitigated disaster that, that, uh, that other people want to make them out to be. But I guess we're going to, we might, might get into some film later about that. So, <laughs> and we definitely will. Good tease. I guess the deal is, is that it has been a while since Florida State has been like a, a solidified number one starter. So you know what you're getting out of Jordan Travis. I think the trepidation in the depth is you don't really know what you're getting. One is a true freshman and AJ Duffy. The other one, Kev's, Kev's favorite son, Tate Rotomaker. <laughs> We've seen a little bit and the results have been mixed, but in another year, he is a developmental prospect as he's developed. <laughs> And as Adam kind of mentioned before, this is a spring football preview. So going a into lot. fall, there may be some more people added to the roster. Let a me lot say can that. change. A lot can change. Well, let's get into that beautiful bean footage. I want to talk about Jordan Travis. I yeah, know. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to talk about with Jordan, obviously. Of oh. course. We'll start, Adam, if there's so oh. much to say. Kev, what are you doing? Well, I mean, I think first off, obviously, he's a lightning rod and I can't. I can't even look at that head of hair. I'm so jealous. The youth. <laughs> no. So I mean, you know, they're they're. He's a lightning rod. That 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 obviously quarterback one is always going to be a focal point for every fan base. Um, 
Is the film playing or no? Or are we no. you just you're just vamping right now? Okay, that's cool. I can vamp with you. I didn't know if my like computer. Oh, there we go. Hey. Hey. Okay. Yeah, Adam, you are ter- you are terrible at ad living. That's I, phenomenal. I, I, I just I couldn't. Kev's moving around down there. He's looking up. I didn't know what was going. So all right. So, so <laughs> good speed. I and now, now the naked boot game is that something you think we're going to see? more this year than we saw last year it wasn't a huge component of the offense last year but i i think it's I think something you're going to see in in the trickery like that situational was. yeah so situational, situational yes i i i mean and we've got the chalkboard we're going to pull it up and we're going to look at some stuff but uh i want to see I that mean, play again we saw we saw as the season went on they went to they they took the running game kind of out of his hands um I don't know if they deactivated the, the the running game for him, the quarterback reportion. If defenses right. were taking it away with, with different looks, I think that that's probably some of it. But uh, he became less of a runner and more of a thrower as the season went on. He was around a sixty percent passer in the last two uh, last two games of the year. Skippy, I think skippy. I think if you would have projected his uh, his BC and Florida games out to. Uh, a 12 game season, he'd have been around 3000 yards passing 60 ish percent passing uh, completion percentage. So, I mean, it, that's, that's actually a pretty good year for a quarterback. Um, if he could do that over 12 games. Yeah. Very efficient. Definitely an efficient guy. Accuracy improved from 2020 to what he did this year and this backyard football stuff. I mean, that's the intangible with Jordan Travis and he really needed it last year for a very uneven play from the offensive line. It'll be interesting to see, like you said, Adam is, can can you extrapolate what Jordan Travis did at the end of the year to right. a full season? Can yeah. he improve on that? Or was the stuff we saw at the end of the year really his ceiling? I think that's the main question. Kev, what do you think? No, I think I think he's definitely got a higher ceiling. You saw that throw to Ja'Kai Douglas that if they get open, um, especially on these deep balls, he he's shown a decent, decent ceiling here. So that that's a perfect ball in stride, even with better coverage. That that's a touchdown right there. Um it's whether or not he can be consistent in the intermediate range. Um, mm-hmm. I think by the end of the season, you saw teams just uh, playing over the top, taking away that deep ball and really challenging him to make the short intermediate throws. Uh, I think he improved, and I think he's got room to improve as he gets more comfortable with his footwork, um, which really is the big problem. He can he can get a little bit happy feet in the pocket, especially if there's if there's pressure. Um, it obviously won't show up much here because it's a highlight tape, but, uh, just nice getting those throw. feet more consistent can make you more consistent in that intermediate game. It's, uh, about finding a rhythm, finding a couple of receivers that you can trust to, to win off the, win off the line and, and get open and really throw the ball in rhythm and on stride. And I think you'd see with Jordan Travis, it's not, he doesn't have a cannon for an arm. His deep ball game is he's got good touch on his deep ball, but he still has enough zip. Like you saw in that touchdown against Syracuse, he, he can fit it in a tight window. It's just consistently. How many times can he hit that window? I'm interested. I really do think the concern with Jordan Travis right now is durability. Um, I don't know, man. Like, like Kevin, what, if you had to set like an over under of how many games Jordan Travis, you expect him to start next year, what would you nine and a half. Like, do you, do you see Jordan Travis as a 10 game starter for Florida state next year? I, I would say that he is. I, I think that, um, he's not going to lose the position for non-injury reasons, uh, most right. likely. And so, yeah, I, I don't really foresee him missing more than a few games because of injury. I mean, you know, heaven forbid that he, he has something devastating and he, and he misses out on, on multiple games in the season, but I, I don't, I don't think he's going to get beat up here and there enough to to really miss that much valuable time. Um, and if he does have a have a catastrophic season ending injury, that's not really because he's injury prone. That's just because that those things happen in a game like football. What do we think about the play selection that's going to be different from this year as opposed to last year? Is it going to be the same number of design quarterback runs? Is it gonna? Is there gonna be some sort of component to Mike Norvell's offense that we've seen in the past at Memphis that we haven't seen to date? I mean, do you guys expect it to look different at all? Maybe you don't. Maybe we just expect to see a lot more of the same stuff we did at the end of last year, just the better playmakers. What, what do you guys think the differences are going to be uh, with this offense and Jordan Travis running it this year? Yeah, I think it's going to be run, run the football. I mean, that this is what Mike Norvell is. He's a running, running offensive mind. He wants to run the football. 
they want to set up vertical play action passes off of that and vertical passing game off of that. Uh, when you start getting um, different secondary, you know, safety rotations and whatnot, then he wants to attack those one-on-ones vertically uh, with some comebacks, um, some back shoulder stuff. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, so we know that's what he wants to do. And I think that that's what we started to see more of at the end of the year last year. Obviously, he didn't have uh, wide receivers who could go out and win one-on-ones. Um, and, and really, you didn't have an offensive line that could could do anything at the end of the year after the whole. Yeah, and we had a lot of issues with the interior with Maurice Smith. Yeah. It seemed like the, the year had kind of caught up with them to where they really were. Um, it was the walking wounded for sure. At many, many positions, they were ineffective. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to see a more true form of you know, a lot of people have talked about the Mike Norvell offense. I think we're going to see a more true form of what that is. Um, I mean, I think that there, you, you can't have a player as dynamic as Jordan Travis and not run him at all. We saw them incorporate that toss read in uh, more last year in a few games, but we saw them go away from midline. Uh, we didn't see a lot of midline this year, whereas in 2020, we saw a ton of it. So I think that they're going to, I think they're going to incorporate some safer runs for him and keep him active in that just as a threat because you have to. Right. Um, but I think that they really are going to want to feature the running backs more in, in that portion of the run game and then work vertically with the passing game. So I, 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 to answer your question, I think it's going to look similar to last year with the play action. You saw some boot stuff there on, on the highlights. Um, we yeah, saw some, that was minimal, right? Yeah, like, was, I, think, I think that's still going to be situational. I'm just interested to see are the games going to be called the same, but because the personnel is different, is it like, is it going to look different? Are we really going to do anything different? Are we going to finally have some receivers on the outside that can win some of these one-on-ones? They don't have to be schemed a hundred percent open to be a threat. So I'm interested to see Kev concept wise. What do you expect it to look like? At least from a chalkboard perspective. Yeah. To kind of go back to what AB was saying, um, a lot of the midline and even triple. um, So so what you're doing is you're either reading this tackle or, or this end, um, and, and they kind of play off of each other. But at, at its essence, it's just a, a zone read option or even a counter read option where you're getting guys blocking up. You're leaving one man unblocked, and it's a true read between the two. And you're basically treating the quarterback like a running back in the situation where um, he has every every – is just as likely to carry the ball as a running back, depending on how they want to do it. A lot of mm-hmm. times teams will will make Jordan Travis run the ball uh, in hopes that you wear him down over the course of the game. Um, we saw them do this less and less. Uh, you saw them you saw them kind of do do a fair amount of rollout passes to kind of get him out into into space. Um, but you saw less and less of the the pure designed read runs. Um, and I think they're going to ask him to be more of a quarterback. I think that's the expectation. I think that's where they see him going. Um, Norvell really likes to take advantage of these one-on-one matchups out here. And you saw him go out and get some wide receivers that could potentially be those guys. Um, so they're either going to hit these one-on-ones backside on this corner, or they're going to try to isolate a, a slot on a safety like you saw with that uh, touchdown to Ja'Kai Douglas. Um, but... Truly, the question is to me: um, if you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're gonna win or lose on these games, you have to be able to uh, you have to be able to win these one on one matchups on the outside, um, or you have to be dominant in the running game. And you saw that as the season went on, they were not they were not winning these matchups up front anymore. Um, and um, I, I think they did get better at, at these outside throws. Uh, Jordan Travis's stats would kind of support that, but um, uh, I think it's going to take a lot of pressure off him to make great throws with with the kind of receiving staff that uh, they're trying to build through the transport, transfer portal this past season. Here, here's what Mike's going to want to do. He's going to want to try to get a safety declared into the box with via the run game, whether that be Jordan Travis run game or running back. I think it's going to, they're going to want it to be the, the running back portion of the run game that gets a, some sort of safety declared in the box as a run fitter. Um, and then now that is going to open up your vertical passing game. I mean, this is what we talk about. Now you've got one guy in the center of the field. that's that's trying to play over the top of all these different things. This is where you see that play action, 
you know, you get guys uh, hesitating and you get that slot fade off of that and those kinds of things. I mean, th- that's what he's going to want to do. Um, it was curious to me at the, at the end of the year last year, they went a lot of empty. Um, I, part, part of me thinks that we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, what is that? This upcoming year. Cause I think you've got a couple dynamic slot receivers in Jakai Douglas. Um, Winston and, Wright, and Mike Winston, Pittman. Yeah. And Winston Wright and Mikai Pittman. You went out and got some slot types that I think that can be matchup problems. I, I'm just curious. I don't know. Just, just a, something inside of me thinks that we're going to see some more of that this year. Um, they're going to, they're going to trust that offensive line up front, spread the field real wide, allow Jordan to be the athlete that we know he can be and that they know he can be uh, and remove the quarterback read part of the part of the game. It's a little bit safer. He could take off and run and slide and whatnot. Um, but really spread the field real wide, throw, let him throw the football, let him run around when he has to. I don't know. It's just something, something I can see. Well, I, I think that's a fair assumption just because of the, the focus they put on those agile slip, uh, Jesus Christ, shifty <laughs> change of direction guys. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, very, yeah. yeah. Th- those guys that are uh, a matchup prompt for a safety or maybe a weak side linebacker. And it would be good to, We've been talking a lot about the outside and talking a lot about the run game. I it, I know it's not a huge focus of Mike Norvell's offense, but a little bit more um, willingness to go over the middle, utilize some of the, you know, utilize Cam McDonald's skill set, not mm-hmm. like a true complete tight end or a blocking tight end, especially Jordan Wilson's not on the team anymore. It will be interesting to see what they could do with Cam McDonald over the middle, what they could do with Johnny Wilson if he does kind of yep. line up in that, that H-back role. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see, but they do have options available. And the, the talk of Jordan Travis is by the end of the year, some stats bore out that he was like a top 25, top 30 college quarterback. So let's, let's talk about over the course of an entire season as your number one starter, more and more tape begins to accumulate on them. You get the workload of a full season, the wear and tear. Do you guys think what is Jordan Travis's ceiling as FSU's uh, full season starter what do we think like could he be a top 30 quarterback potentially top 20 better worse i mean what, what do you think the ceiling is for jordan travis in this offense in 2022 yeah i i, I mean i think the ceiling's top 20 ish type quarterback um i mean assuming health now you know that's tough to assume health obviously but right i mean i think he can be a four a, a four thousand yard Quarterback. Total yard, total, total yard. yards, correct. Yeah. Not just passing yards, total yards. Um, I think he can be that. Um, he 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 made better decisions with the football last year. Some of it, uh, some of his interceptions were not his fault. They were balls off the hands of receivers that, that fell into the laps of uh, of DBs. I mean, that's that's dynamic right there. That, that's, yeah, it is. You're absolutely right. That's something that I, I I don't know of a lot of quarterbacks that 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 can do that in America right now. I'm sure there's some. But then he makes a smart play. He gets himself out of bounds. We saw him do more of that last year. Uh, you know, we're going to need to see less of this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, really be relying on him in that kind of role, which you hope going out and getting a Caden Lyles and really and trying to solidify your offensive line that way. Uh, and some of those young guys being older is going to help to do that. It's, we're hoping that it's going to help take that off his plate. But he was able to push the ball vertically more last year. You went out and got some receivers that you're going to try to try to get involved, um, you know, hopefully the span and, and, and those guys can be more dynamic than what you had in the past. Uh, and it was something all year, too. I think it's yeah. it, obviously we're not going to see it in the highlights. But Florida State did have some issues when the field compressed, right? I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about after that fourth and 14 against Miami, I mean, we had to run like, what, three QB sneaks in a row before they yeah. finally punched yeah. it in. It was it's something that. Hopefully it can be alleviated through a combination of all the guys. Oh man, this was an awesome play. (laughs) I'm just Uh, very optimistic about Jordan Travis. I can remember one of the first shows we did was looking at Jordan uh, in the spring of 2020, or maybe it was even looking at 2019 stuff from him and talking about him in 2020 where his body was all out of whack. His feet were not in sync with his upper body. Nope. He's developed so much as a passer. I, I don't, I don't see what people think or what, what people are seeing that suggests he can't be more. This is here's a good throw. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, this is one of those things that, that you were just talking about. 
Um, this is what you expect to see him take another step forward. So you got cover two here. Um, so this corner is kind of playing in this flat. There's a safety that has the deep half of the field over here, um, which means that there's this there's this area called a pocket. All right, this pocket is you know prime territory for cover two. Yep. Um, usually you'll send someone over the field so you kind of get this safety in a bind between either covering the middle of the field or getting behind this cornerback who's kind of sitting here. Mm -hmm. Right. So this this is not an easy throw. This is this is a throw that when I'm watching high school quarterbacks, um, something you look for because it takes arm strength, timing, and that's just a good ball. That's mm -hmm. you know, watch his footwork here. He gives a little fake. There's no running back there, but you know, it's enough to pull pull these linebackers up, get them out of the read. He gets to the back of his drop. And he delivers a good ball. I mean, he's not he's not a cannon. It's not going to, you know. No, but we're not talking about him for the NFL. We're talking about his play at Florida State. Right. I, I, I would love for Jordan to go and have an NFL career, make lots of money. That'd be great. But for the for the sake of this show, we're talking about the 2022 football season, uh, specifically the spring, and what he can be. And look, I mean, he, throws, throw. he, can throw, he can throw the ball vertically. He can he can make the majority of those throws down the field inside outside the hashes. Um, he hasn't been much of a passer in between the hashes over the middle of the field, but that's also not something they've asked him to do. Um, and also, Adam, with better athletes on the outside, if you're not hitting a guy in stride ten yards further than where Jordan Travis is, maybe some of those those catches where like an Ontario Wilson falls down with a better right. athlete, that's a yards after a catch. I mean, right. You're giving your guys your playmakers opportunity to be mm -hmm. playmakers and they went and upgraded those spots so yeah i and, agree I, I don't think it's a big detriment at all and there's not a defensive coordinator in america who is going to game plan and not have to consider what he's doing there he spends a lot of time his movement skills i mean yeah it's incredible he's just too dynamic of a runner to not to ignore it it changes everything you have to do on defense to yeah so defensive coordinators don't want to face him even if like even if he's a top twenty-five quarterback stats stats wise, he's he's like a top fifteen quarterback in terms of which preparation kind of times people yeah. don't want to face, right? Like I agree, hundred percent. Right. Go, go ahead. ahead, go try. No, go ahead. And finish. I your was point. just I was just gonna say that, it, and I get the I get the hesitation because the ceiling is limited, at least perceived it perceived limited because of durability. And then also complete like arm talent from his position. But I'm with Kevin, right? Just the amount of attention that he that he demands from a defensive coordinator and their defense as a whole. Um, he's a tough kid to prepare for. I, I, I tend to think his ceiling is probably around like top 25 based on if you're judging it from a raw stat standpoint. But impact on the game, I, it's tough. It's tough to quantify, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, so where are the areas that he's got to improve? I mean, because I, I think it's important to talk about that, too. Yeah, we've um, sung his praises. Consistent yeah, accuracy, have. for sure. I think consistent accuracy, and like you said, those mechanics that got better from a year ago, they're still not it, mm -hmm. they're, they're still not where they need to be 100%. The decision-making, while improved, there were some times where it was – you did lay – like you left scratching your head. Yeah. Um, and then – willingness to kind of climb the pocket and i don't know if that's just a survival response in my opinion but there were a lot of times where i don't remember him bailing a lot of clean pockets but i also don't really ever remember in him climbing the pocket into the interior and really firing it off from there i i, I don't remember a lot of those plays so i think those are some defined areas where he can improve i think yeah. i think the last one is one that people are going to need to give up on i don't think that that's going to be a part of his game okay i think we're going to have to i think I, I think this concept of of old school, you know, stepping up in the pocket is kind of going by the wayside now, especially for an athlete like him. I'm forever? better. I'm not forever, but for an athlete like him, I'm good with him getting out and running. He's much yeah. more of a threat to a defense if he's moving than if he's climbing, in my opinion. Um, maybe that's crazy. Maybe that's wrong. No, he, I'm I, sure. I'm sure there's going to be throws that get missed over the course of a game because he doesn't step up. But I think about the times that he impacts a defense when he uh, moves and I will take that trade off. Personally. And I think that's, I think that's a realistic way to look at his play style. He's been in the, he's been at Florida state for a number of years. Yeah. 
there are some things where whether it's a limitation due to like physical arm talent, play style preference, the interior of the offensive line, whatever. You're right, Adam. That might be something where people are calling on, and he may never get to it, and he he may adopt a play style where he abandons that completely. Yeah. So that's, I think that's a fair point, and I think that's something people need to look at when they, the first couple of games start happening next year. And, and I think – I think sorry, Kev, go ahead. And to tag on to that, um, I think that kind of the weakness <laughs> added to the weakness last year. I, I think that he's the kind of guy that can – hit open receivers, but I don't think you're going to get someone. Let's just say if you have Jordan Travis throwing receivers open in the middle of the field, that's a Heisman level player. Like if you've got a kid that's making those elite throws with his athleticism, that's that those kids don't come around very often. So, um, that's I, a good point. I would be shocked if that's like ever becomes a strength. And last year, since the receivers weren't getting open over the middle very often, um, it, it didn't help. He he's not going to throw those kids open. So, hopefully, getting getting receivers that are more likely to be open over the middle um, helps helps him in that category uh, and makes him look better, despite not taking huge steps in this in an area that's really hard. And really, it's one of those areas that separates even good NFL quarterbacks from average yeah. NFL quarterbacks. Yeah. I agree, Kevin. I think that anticipation, he's a kid that can hit open receivers consistently, but he's not a guy that's going to get the receivers open. I don't think the anticipation is overly elite, and maybe that's something that can improve to being good or serviceable with another year in the Mike Norvell offense, but it's not like they're running like crossing routes over the middle of the field all the time. Norvell wants you to hit the deep ball and he stresses the verticality. So maybe to be a really good, effective Norvell quarterback, the anticipation doesn't have to be elite, but I'm with you. I, I, I don't think that that's something that's realistically going to develop into a strength over the next couple months. No, it's just not, I mean, there's stuff data out there that suggests that you're not going to learn to be a great, uh, you're not going to become a, a great anticipator, uh, anticipatory thrower. Um, you can certainly learn it and get better at it, but you're not going to become, you're not going to become a bad one and become a good one. You might become an average one or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing for, he, he's just got to be a film junkie. He's got to understand what the hell's going on in front of him at all times. He's got to understand defenses. If he can understand defenses, he can impact the game. And he's just got to live on film in my opinion. And there's, I think, I think that that could be something where it could be a nice little um, edge for him. You saw on that nice throw on that Miami uh, down the sideline, he did look off to the left and he moved, he manipulated the defense with his eyes. So it's not something to where he's a one read guy and he's locked in. I think he does have the ability to Mm -hmm. compensate for some of those lack of anticipatory, like reflexes and i think that like you said preparation could help out with that so i think that we've talked about jordan travis ad nauseum (laughs) uh which is well we should he's gonna be as jordan travis goes so does the florida state seminoles football team in my opinion so i think we devoted the appropriate amount of time we will be devoting considerably less amount of time to the to the guys the the rest of the room because it's if we're having well if we're gonna have we're gonna have to rely on these guys it's gonna be a long year but i think just quickly before we get into Tate, because I want to talk about him, we, we have some film to break down for him. Is Will Florida State add another quarterback, in your opinion, before the start of fall camp? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. I would, Do you think so, I would too? think so. Um, it would be, if they don't, it would either be telling that they have a lot more trust in number 18 than the rest of us, mm. um, or a... a, a failure on the transfer portal well i i i I just want to i just want to say it's i think it's going to be very difficult to go out and find a quarterback that you're going that's going to leave a school maybe as a starter or whatever and come be a backup and they're going to be the backup they're not going to be the starter here they're going to be the backup um i think that's hard to find uh i know there's been tons of names um whatever the the D2 kid or whatever it was. The kid uh, from UWF. Yeah, I mean, that kid wasn't going to be a starter. He don't want to come to Florida State to be a backup, sit on the bench for a year. Uh, that that makes no sense. So I think it's a tough – I think, you know, as fans are sitting and they're out there on Twitter and they're on all these social media platforms and they're wringing their hands over Florida State needing to get a quarterback, it's not easy to just go pick one and say, hey, come be our backup. 
because we trust they they as the staff trust Jordan Travis. They like him as a starter. Could you have gone and pursued a upgrade over Jordan Travis? I guess you likely weren't going to land any of those kids, but it's not going to be easy to go out and tell a kid who was a starter to come in and be a backup at Florida State behind Jordan Travis and give up, you know, your dream of being a Division One starting quarterback. That's just I don't think that that's going to be easy to do. I think they want out a quarterback. I don't know if they're going to be able to get a quarterback. I, I think you got two options in front of you with the way that this quarterback room shakes out and what you have, you're either going to get an undervalued asset or you're going to get a reclamation project. Mm-hmm. Tate Martell, get him out of retirement. No, God, oh, he's, like running <laughs> he's, he's, like got, he's got to be managing like an enterprise rent a car by now. Or something. Anyway, let's talk about Tate. Kevin, I'm going to let you take it because this is your guy. Um, yeah, and it's kind of like a that. running gag, but what are yeah. the, what are the positive as the, as the films are going? And I think we got some film from Tate, the spring game last year. What were the things like, what are the positive you see in him, And what are the things that he needs to improve? I'm going to, I'm going to let you drive the majority of this one. So, um, Tate Runemaker is a, a bit of a knucklehead as you see in this throw. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's what my old quarterback coach would have called it. Uh, that's, that was just a knuckleheaded throw. Um, well, you had a nice quarterback coach. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was, this was my 12 year old football coach. So um, okay. I gotcha. Uh, so, um, yeah, he, he makes some baffling decisions at times. Um, and this is, this is a spring game. So I think a lot of this is happening before him, but once we get to a play where you kind of see, you know, that's a good throw on the run there. Um, he, he has probably the best arm talent, uh, out of anybody on the roster last year and, and pro- maybe this year, uh, Duffy Duffy could probably give him a run for his money. Um, mm-hmm. He just makes he's he's just got a strong arm. He he can throw make the throws, um, but uh, his decision making hasn't been there. Uh, I think this is why the they like him. Uh, so if you watch him play, and you watch Norbell's offense, really what they like to do is they like to go to these trip sets and have kind of an ISO situation down here. Uh, it, and if they're, if the defense is, is kind of adjusting to this trips, you'll often get a one-on-one. He's got a pretty good, uh, rapport with, uh, Portier. Uh, Portier, and, yeah. and they, yeah. and they complete those balls more often than not. And this is just something that, uh, Florida state hasn't gotten a lot of, uh, and I know it's one of Norvell's bread and butters. It's one of the reasons why I think that Norvell might be a little bit higher on him than, the rest of us see that's just a bad decision. Um, yeah, run into his left. Uh, the guy's not open. There's someone undercutting him. Um, Shadow of your goal line. <laughs> it, it's 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 a recipe for a terrible play. <laughs> but he he's got a smooth quick release. You see it here. They um, kind of went to more of a quick game. So this is you know, this is stick. This is just air raid stuff. They they're doing here some West Coast concepts and. He reads it right. This guy stays with the stick, meaning there's he's open here. Um, so if if they can get him in rhythm and make these little throws, I don't think he's a total liability. I I think he's I think he's like an inexperienced James Blackman, um, which sounds like a terrible thing, but eh, it's for your, it's a, for your a, QB two, right? A serviceable backup that you hope to not see in the game. See that that was th- underthrown by a foot, but. He just casually flicks this ball 50 yards. He's got an arm. So that's, yeah, that's really what you see when you see uh, Tate Rotomaker. But um, these the mistakes he makes, the mental errors like here, uh, just taking too long, trying to find a, a perfect throw. He gets for the ball here, but he, he takes a couple sacks down the, down the road. and um, Right there, that's a great play, right? Yeah. S- see, well, he's, he, he, he sees the hot. Sees the blitz coming, he gets the ball to his hot receiver. Um, that's not that's not easy. Drop ball. He's kind of like the anti Jordan Travis, right? Like the arm's great, but everything else is questionable. Where Jordan, where it's like the arm is sort of questionable, but all the other like the package surrounding it is very dangerous. So it's, I'm with you, Kevin. I you get a lot of crap for it as well. You probably should, but that's okay. You deserve <laughs> a little bit. It keeps it keeps you honest. Um, oh, here no, there's, it is. there's, there's, there's pieces. Yeah. That's a nice play. There's this is pieces a good throw there in the, in the age of the transfer portal. This guy's got the, the ability to be a very serviceable backup. I do want to have your opinion. Do you think that by the time fall camp starts, I mean, where do you, 
where do you think Tate Rotomaker is going to be in on the depth chart? Let's just say that without the addition of somebody new, I mean, do we think that he's got like if if they ran, went into the season with Duffy, with Tate, and with Jordan Travis, do we think that Tate has that QB two spot locked down for certain? If Tate is still making the mistakes he made in this film, uh, where he's taking too long to read the ball, he throws the ball into traffic. Uh, you saw it in Jacksonville State. He threw a pick pretty early on. Uh, yeah. That was that was clearly covered. If you're seeing him make those same mistakes, which are fixable, these are these are fixable mistakes. Um, come spring game, I would I would be shocked if he was quarterback number two in the fall. But if he's fixed some of these, if he's kind of leaning into his arm talent a little bit, I think. He earns his QB two spot for for probably at least the first portion of the season, depending on how how long it takes Duffy to to get in the swing of things, get integrated. Adam, do you agree with that assessment? Uh, I don't think there's any chance he's the backup quarterback. Zero Duffy, chance. They invest in the future. Uh, it's yeah, I think it's Duffy or a transfer. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Do we, so we do expect then, I guess, because AJ Duffy talented four-star prospect from IMG Academy, uh, Florida state's highest rated quarterback recruits. since I think 2017, mm-hmm. um, legitimately talented kid, a guy that Mike Norvell, you know, was zeroed in on a guy that they were able to close on, which was nice and, uh, differentiated from some of the other prospects that we had to <laughs> hear about, uh, in December. Anyway. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. Guys. Uh, do we expect quick on AJ Duffy? Like I said, talented kid, very young, true freshman. We expect AJ Duffy to take any snaps in the 2022 football season. I, I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I was, I, yeah, it was, it's up to y'all. It was a question. I, I, That's what yeah. we do here. We ask questions and answer I, them. I think, I think he'll get a few snaps. I think so too. I yeah. think we will see him on the field. I think he gets a few snaps game one. Game one. Oh yeah. Oh the, yeah. Du- against the Duquesnes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah well, I, no, just to just to add, I, I I think I I agree with you. I think that um, Tate hopefully isn't starting, and that means that Duffy's ready. But yeah. if you're if JT goes down game one and Oof. you're desperate, I think you put in a kid that gives you a slightly higher chance of winning at least a few games until you feel like Duffy's ready. I, I don't know. Unless I'm I'm with you. I think. God, dude, this would be so terrible. That would be, uh, but that's Florida State's I, luck at this point. If Jordan, Jordan Travis goes. To, do you, would you start AJ? And this is assuming yes, they don't have a transfer. Yes. You start AJ Duffy in New Orleans against You're, LSU. You, oh. No, yes. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yes, you're not. You're not winning any games without Jordan Travis. So, well, I'm, you, I'm, I feel terrible for even put this out in the ether. So I, I want to quit talking about this as soon as we can. And I want to get uh, out of here. We, <laughs> did, I, we did do the breakdown of, of AJ Duffy. That's why we didn't include any film here, by the way. We, call. Don't, yeah. we don't want to feel we're not we're not trying to slight AJ. Um, I'm, no, I'm not at all. And we are and we are. Go- and he is. He's a very talented prospect. He had his own videos. Well, he deserved going the X's and Knowles YouTube channel. And he's going to be a player that we're going to break down as we yeah. get practice footage. Yeah, we're excited. going to continue to break these guys down and it's going to shape our opinion of the room. But speaking of our opinion of you, we love you. You're mm-hmm. great. Thanks for watching the triple option. We're going to be here with you all spring. We're going to di- dissect and just pick apart like a like a finely barbecued pork rib. We're just going to pick apart every little bit of like meat that's that. on those spring practice footage bones. We're going to break it down. We're going to do the rest of our position previews. You know, continue to continue to support Kevin on the Patreon. He looks good. Nice little classy lights in the background. Uh, he could still use more of your money. I and guarantee that's... you that he is much more destitute than he looks. He is much more poor than he puts off. He's a good, he's got a good, <laughs> got a stiff upper lip, strong chin on that kid. Give him money, support him on the Patreon, guys. But as we go through the spring coverage, you know, we like to hear from you. Like, if there's anything you want to see, continue to ask questions in the comments. Kev or Adam, or you, either address them in the comments, or maybe we'll address them on the show. But yep. tell your friends about us. We really shine when there's actual real football stuff to get into. And tell everybody about us, and we're going to be here. And Keep chopping on. Guys, anything you want to add before we do our uh, tandem chops? Yeah, shout out to Kev. He was down rubbing elbows with uh, Derek Ray and Adam Fuller down at the coaching clinic recently. Uh, yes, he was. Rubbing yeah. elbows, making trying to make some moves here. Hopefully, hopefully we can get coach. <laughs> hopefully we can get Coach Fuller on the show and turn some film on and have some good good football conversation. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. There you go, Kevin. You've been actually recognized in the Leon County City Limits and and 
it's be, founded upon. I mean, and beyond. Yeah, the Bay said, Area. Can't have been on the streets, man. Did, buy him a Shirley <laughs> Temple or whatever he likes to drink. You know what I mean? Like, just be nice. Say what's up, Kev. Oh, I love sh- your stuff. Shirley Temple. <laughs> sure. I feel like you're a Shirley Temple guy. You love grenadine, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Keep jumping oh, on, guys. See you soon. Up. Let's go. <laughs>